Hello, I'm Grayson Clark, leader of our commercial markets at LexisNexis Risk Solutions. Today, I'm excited to be here with three of the world's foremost experts on fraud and identity. To talk a bit about Behaviosec, a recent acquisition here at LexisNexis Risk Solutions, and how combined with existing capabilities, we see that transforming the world of fraud. So first, Neil, I'll start with you. Tell us a bit about behavioral biometrics and then how Behaviosec differentiates in this space. Um, well, first off, behavioral biometrics, it's, it's 2023, they're everywhere. Um, every sophisticated financial institution or fintech has either behavioral biometrics in place or it's on the roadmap. So you're going to hear an awful lot about it in the next one. Um, and the reason why is uh, user experience for the consumers. Sophisticated technologies kind of uh, lead to churn. People don't like to use them. People are very afraid. Uh, and one of the key benefits of behavioral biometrics is the transparency and the quality of the scoring for uh, for detecting that user is who they say they are. And then tell us about Behaviosec. How is it that Behaviosec is so uniquely different in this space? Uh, Behaviosec spun out of some academic research at Swedish University in the uh, mid 2000s. So we've been at it for quite a long time at this stage. Um, and with the support of DARPA, we were using this technology on mobile to uh, to focus on the individual itself. It was it was viewed as a uh, as a replacement authentication technology to verify that user is who they say they are on mobile. Uh, and we took that and 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 the advances we made uh, into consumer space uh, into the fraud prevention space, uh, but always had that focus on the end user themselves. So it's about the user, not necessarily the overall fraud pattern. And I think that's a the, the, the kind of unique uh, part that Behaviosec brought to the behavioral by major space. That's right. And as you got to know LexisNexis Risk Solutions, mm-hmm. what was it about being part of the capability suite here that got you excited? Um, well, to date, you know, we deliver a promise of this behavioral biometrics, but it's always in silos. Uh, and the, you know, the next thing uh, to be part of the digital identity network gives us that global picture. So it's not just, you know, one by one by one, but that will have it in the overall fiction. Excellent. Well, Kim, in the United States, tell us a little bit about some of the trends you're seeing now that Behaviosec is part of an already very comprehensive suite of fraud identity solutions. How do you see this accelerating and changing the story? So what I'll say is that um, in the U.S. and Canada, we are seeing continued adoption of um, mobile apps um, as a key trend. Um, so using your mobile device for um, the ability to interact online um, to work with the companies that you want to work with. That opens the door to new types of fraud and for a, a experience they want to have that is uh, as seen with as possible. So behavior biometrics is perfect to try to help in giving new fraud signals um, in a completely passive manner, as well as opening the door to new types of authentication to make it easier for the consumer. That's right. Stephen, around the world, tell us about some of the things you're excited about for the combination of Behaviosec and the existing set of solutions that we have in place today. Sure. I mean, because when we look at our solutions, when I head of acquiring Behaviosec, Theramatrics was focused on digital identity intelligence and being able to trust or um, highlight the risk of those digital identities. And that was based on not knowing anything about the user. Um, what Behaviosec gives us is that ability then to be looking at the profiles of the users and validating that it's really that user behind the digital identity every time. Um, if we look around the, around the world where, where we're going to be applying some of these things, um, Fraud generally, just having that extra layer means that the, the actual fraud models, whether it's traditional third-party fraud or scams, those models are going to be much more enriched by having these two best-of-breed solutions together. Um, but it's also going to help some of the clients with some of the emerging regulations as well. So, for example, in Europe, the, uh, the PST2 regulation that came out in the last few years around authentication, one of the things that the regulators called out there was that you could use behavioral biometrics as a form of authentication. So that's obviously then interesting for our European customers. If we look in other parts of the world, India, for example, recently, last year, um, the, the Indian uh, Reserve Bank specifically called out that you should be using behavioral biometric signals within your overall fraud uh, analysis as well. So as we look around the world, there are different places where we're going to be able to enable our customers to, to align more with the regulations that are in and That's perfect. It's a huge problem globally, uh, stopping fraud and making identities easier to use so they have trusted, easy authentication for consumers. Incredibly important. What types of innovation do you see taking place looking forward? Well, we do a lot of fast-paced um, evolution of our solutions. So the first thing was making sure we could have Behaviosec um, on our platforms so that way we can easily get it into the hands of our customers. Um, the next phase is going to be really trying to show what those results are so they can find new ways um, to be able to roll out behavioral biometrics. 
Um, there's a lot of uh, opportunity for us to support not just consumers, but even employees in the process and just trying to make as secure a process as possible whenever you're interacting online. That's great. Now tell us about the roadmap. What can customers expect? And Stephen, when do you see these solutions getting to market and being available? I mean, the solutions are really coming out right now. That integration is reaching the end. Um, so we are already going and talking to our, our existing customers to look for those first pilots to really validate that, that, that initial integration. Um, and then we'll be working through the coming months until mid-year really to, to add all the bells and whistles that weren't in that initial phase to, to, to basically bring all of the capabilities that we're in behavior sake onto our, our combined uh, f and uh, platforms at NOS. Terrific. And how about the roadmap for innovation? There's a lot that has evolved, even if you just look back over the last couple of years. Kim, how do you see innovation looking forward, combining BehaviorSec and the existing Lexus and Access Risk Solutions capabilities? I think we have a very well well machine where we can um, pivot quickly and we can find those synergies within our solutions. Um, so I think that we're going to have um, a constantly evolving roadmap. But initially, our goal, again, is to make it as easy for our customers to access our products. Um, so that has been a key piece. And then to be able to integrate it into workflows um, and to augment um, our authentication capabilities. So all of those things are going to continue down the path. Um, and we're going to be able to accelerate it, I think, with adding behavioral biometrics into the play. Sorry. Thanks, Kim. Neil, a lot of problems can be solved using behavioral biometrics. Where should customers start first applying this within their enterprises? Um, well, it is uh, as that extra layer for the user verification. That's the, the primary uh, kind of entry point we see people use. But after that, particularly when the data scientists get to see uh, some of the information as possible, we've seen people apply it into uh, bot prevention, uh, spotting overall global trends. Uh, so that there's, there's many uses, but it tends to be user verification on the first stage. That's great. Stephen, now that BehavioSec is combined with the LexisNexis risk solutions capabilities, Tell us a little bit about the power of this combination and why it's so exciting. Yeah, absolutely. So behavior is a natural complement to Sphermetrics. So the Sphermetrics solution, what it does today is it focuses on using digital identity intelligence to, add to it, analyze for risk or trust. Uh, and the power of that really was that we didn't need to know anything about the end user. We're just looking at the digital identities and providing that information back. Behavior sex slots on as an extra layer because as Neil mentioned, you're looking now at profiles of individual users. Still don't need to know who the actual user is, but you're understanding the user behind the digital identity. So when you add the two together, you're, you're having a much broader set of data to build your frauds models, your scan models, your fuel models, um, using a much richer data set, and then you're taking these two breast of weak platforms and bugging them together. 